Yay. <laughs> it's so strange. It only does like half of the things in <laughs> that I have. Yeah, I know. And then like I move one thing down and it's uh Hi so everybody. Hello. Yay, hello. Um Good grief. Thank you, Lightstream. Thank you for taking my money. <laughs> oh, well, I guess man. I have to contact them about not taking my money on Monday. <laughs> I guess, yeah. yeah. They charged me on the 8th. They charged me on the 1st. So, Oh, wow, really? To, yeah. So I need to uh, contact them, I guess. Yeah. We're, uh, we're just discussing our – we discovered what, last week that we were both being charged like a double amount yeah. for our – we're being double billed by Lightstream. Yeah, so which is a lot. I mean, it's not cheap. No, so it's, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. way more expensive than OBS, which is free, which uh, yeah. I don't know. I feel bad about making you sit on House Party for OBS because I, I, I don't have a Zoom. Right. Uh, how? I mean, maybe Zoom is more cost effective. I don't know. Maybe. Zoom is a little – a few dollars less. Yeah. So maybe we try that. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> I'm trying to find the po ah cool. I'm trying to find the post on our Facebook so I can share it. If you're hi, if you're here, say hi in the chat. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm kind of excited about tonight because I don't know if a lot of people have heard um, about this story. No, I don't know many true crime ghost stories. It's really <laughs> yeah <laughs> really. We are in we are in different sides of true crime. I know. Yeah, all true I don't. Yeah, because I don't. I'm like ghost curious, but I'm not like into ghosts. So okay, okay. I'm more into you know like sex workers who get <laughs> right <laughs> serial murders, uh, husbands who kill their wives. You know, suicides that don't look like suicides, like that. All that. That's my. Those are my jams. Well. We're gonna get we're gonna get some um, medical horror, um, some good old fashioned scammery, some flim flammery. I like scams. I really like scams. Okay. I heard. I, in fact, I'm not gonna say what I listened to today because even though I heard another podcast cover it and I heard it covered, I might do uh, follow up research and do this. If not next week, then soon. The one that I listened to today. So I'm not gonna talk about. Okay. What it was, but I love if uh, just uh, it, this is just a plug for no reason. This person doesn't <laughs> give a shit. But um, the 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 podcast, the pretend podcast, is so good. I have like a crush on the host just because like he's just as good like a podcast crush, not like a love yeah. crush. Uh, he's so good, and it's different because it's about con men and women, and so it's like very unique. Um, Ooh, maybe he'll cover this and. Um, He's just a cool – it's just a cool podcast um, and really well done. And so they – you know, uh, I love – that's to say I just – I love uh, – if you love con men and women's stories, yeah, that's a good one. He did that series I always used to talk about, um, How to how to Disappear. Uh, oh, just like, yeah. He's like a really interesting person. And he has another podcast on the side but with another guy, but the guy who does Twisted, he does it. Um, okay. But um, I don't. I know his first name is Javier. I don't. I cannot remember his last name, but he's great. Uh, Pretend is a great podcast. If you cool. like, if you like uh, con stories, it's really, really. I do. Good, and it's nice because it's like you know that's what you're getting when you go on. Like some podcasts, you don't know. Like if it's just true crime, right. it's a mixed bag. But his is like very. Right. It could be ghosts that. or it could be dead sex workers. You don't <laughs> know. You never anything. know. His is so focused <laughs> that you always know what you're getting. Which is so if you're in the mood for that, it's nice. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, I like swindled too, which they oh, do. Heard, oh, that's um, the. Is that the woman who does? Is she a woman who does swindled? I I've only heard an episode by a dude, but I liked okay. it. Although there was a little editorializing, and you have to you have to realize what editorializing is. Mm -hmm. when you listen so you're like oh that's an opinion that's not a fact so there's a little bit of that i don't know if it was swindled or maybe it was another one but who did the um winter distract or the fall distraction i think with um jensen and holes and she did the whole um the guy who was the um the B backstreet boys and in sync lou pearlman oh, 
Yes, yes. And that's such a good, that is such a, that's a great story. Uh, Like I learned a lot that I didn't know. Um, And I was just like, like I knew like just like hearsay, but then to hear it covered on there was like really interesting, like how shady (laughs) and how despicable he was. Um, So, and yeah, just like that whole, because I was like, sort of not in that whole space, headspace. So uh, they did a good uh, job on that as well. I just noticed you got your new headphones. Yeah, I got them today. We have the same headphones. Yeah, I was like a a couple minutes uh, late logging on because I realized I had gotten boxes and I always get Amazon boxes and sometimes I let them sit. And then I was curious, I looked on my phone to see what was in them, like if I needed them right away. And I saw (laughs) that the they weren't supposed to come till Friday and they came today. So then I was like, oh, I want to use them. (laughs) Do you love them? Yeah, they're so much better than the other ones and they don't hurt at all. Yeah, yeah. I love these. These are the generic radio person headphones. This is professional on the side. Because you can beat them to death and they'll (laughs) still keep working. (laughs) So they're great. Yeah. Yeah. So far, so good. I mean, it's only been like five minutes, but so far, so good. So far. Fingers crossed. The ghost hasn't acted up yet. Now that I've mentioned the ghost. (laughs) Yeah. I, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to get started yet. We can give it a couple yeah. more minutes. I can t- uh, well, so t- so t- so I had a script for blood work that I got last March. Okay, my doctor randomly called me. Like, I had to get a refill on a prescription, and he was just like, "Well, you can't. You know, it's been so long since you had blood work that you need to." Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, it was right, r- like literally the next week, everything was locked down. So at first, oh, it was wow. just that I didn't feel comfortable getting blood work for a while. And then I was just like, I just kept putting it off. And then it was like, uh, finally today I got it done. But when I was going in, there's a, there's this guy that I think he was like in, he was either in my class or he was like just at my college. And I see him around all okay. the time, but he lives in the same area. And I, for years, every time I saw him had to make very painful small talk. And I don't like that. It was like the kind that just like, as soon as you see the person, you're like, I don't want to, I yeah. hope they don't see me. Yeah. And today he was like at the desk when I came in to like ask you all the COVID questions. And because we both had masks on, we both did that thing where we pretended not to know the other person. And it was so good. Small talk like, is dead. It's I dead. Like, I knew that he knew who I was. And it was yeah. the first time that he just let it go. And I knew, yeah. and he knew that I was like, we, cause we're not, what's the point? Right, right. I just wanted to get in. I was just wanted to get my blood work, and uh, so it was so nice. I was like, "This right. is this is the unintended gift of the mask." I know is that we can just pretend, like, "Uh, do I know you?" No and, small talk. Uh, yeah, pretend like. Yep. Just like the mask gives you permission to sit, pretend like you don't know the person, which is I adore that. I'm just like yeah. this, is- and to sit in silence because yes. what does talking do? It spreads the COVID. Yeah. That's molecules. Mm-hmm. That's- what a particulates of moisture in the air. You oh don't my need god! To have he, necessarily conversations. People could die. Oh my god! He was gossiping up a storm though. Like as soon as I came in, I heard him go to the woman at the next cubicle while I was checking in, and I can hear him just got talking and talking and talking. And I was like, "Thank God, <laughs> it's not me." For her. Oh man, she's probably um, got to be like six feet, sir. Six feet. Well, no, this was someone his coworker, and maybe it was his coworker. Maybe she likes talking to him. He's like one of those super friendly people that people gravitate towards. I just like after a certain point, you don't really know a person anymore. You don't really have mm-hmm. anything to talk about, and I just, I don't know. It's and like unless we know each other really well, I yeah. I don't want to make small talk. I don't mind it if it's just like, hi, how are you? Okay, have a nice day. But like when you have to stop and like, how are you doing? What are right. you up to? How are your like, kids? Yeah. yeah. I don't care. We don't care. We don't want to talk. I'm about sure your kids are lovely. We don't care. Like, yeah, I just want to be like, oh, look, I'm anxious. This doesn't work for me. Right. <laughs> I don't feel comfortable doing this. Um, a friend and I were discussing today – he reached out to another friend of his that he hasn't talked to in a while because like when he gets anxiety, he kind of just like shuts down and doesn't talk to friends. Mm -hmm. And he and I, he and I were talking about like, what do you do when you have friendships where the other person doesn't really understand anxiety? Oh, you know, and doesn't like get that you 
sometimes shut down or sometimes need to disappear. And I'm like, you know what? There are people like that out there and it's sad, but like, you know, sometimes you lose a friend. Sometimes you lose a friend, yeah. but I'm like, in hindsight, sometimes when you lose a friend, it's like a person you kind of needed to lose. I hate right. to say it, but if it's that easy to lose someone, I just feel like, right. I don't know. I mean, not to be a B, but. Yeah. No. Remember when we were, we were doing a live event and we were talking about our friend Amanda and you were like, I wish I was like Amanda. She seems so confident and outgoing yeah. and assertive. And I was like, well, she was raised by, um, she, uh, what cr- well-adjusted people <laughs> like her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hello. Let me hook you. I love that so much. What's just C L E. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Co- COVID? client learning experience. COVID lockdown experience. <laughs> Co- cosmic <laughs> lunar exploration. Cookies. Lemons, elephants. Ah, I mean, like, oh, of course, of course, it's that. <laughs> That's more exciting. That is actually, I, I don't, I would, in my mind, it sounds fun, but it's probably not. But in my mind, it's like, ooh, yeah. Is that like the new, the new tech for lawyers? Like, here are the laws that just passed. Because, <laughs> like, with doctors, there are all those medical journals, and they yeah. come out with new studies. And for lawyers, are they just like? Hey, check out this defense. I'm sure you do need to know because like if something passed, like if something different happens and you don't know about it, you can't use it later. Right. But again, I know nothing. You are going to have a fun continuing legal education time tonight because (laughs) I have a swindler who was only caught on a technicality. (laughs) Oh, I like that. I like when people are caught. Caught, like yeah. I like it more when somebody's caught by like a citizen justice person, you know, like some like a web sleuth or like a. Right. But it is fun when it's just like a mistake because it's just like it's it's like a beautiful yeah a beautiful mistake. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna laugh so hard. So tonight we are gonna do the story of. Norman Baker, who called himself Dr. Norman Baker, but he was never a doctor in his life. Uh, The available classes cover everything. I give them on jury related issues, but they're interesting. They they sound like they'd be interesting. I'm sorry the one you're in is not interesting. I like, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt your, your, you're going into your story, but I have like, I, there's a lot of things I wish I tried. And one thing I wish I tried was law school. Just, I don't even know if I would want to practice law, but just to know it. Like it's, I, I, yeah. there's a million things I just want to know. And it seems like very, especially what Rich does seems like very, or what a hundred RPM does seems very interesting, like to consult on juries. And he has agreed to be our guest one week. We just have yeah, to like yes. get our shit together in order to make it happen. But we and when there's not a CLE. <laughs> yeah. We have to make sure there's, there's not, not a CLE. CLE. <laughs> uh, hopefully a Friday show, but, and he's out in um, California. So it's, it's a time oh, wow. difference, but um yeah, I find that I find it also interesting and I I would I would think that I would love to know it, but like I might not, you know, like maybe I would hate it. No. But it's just yeah. like there's always there's a million things I want to know. If I could, I would just go to, if I had the money, I would go Really? It's never the wrong decision not to go to law school. <laughs> really? I mean, I guess you would say that because you went yeah. to law school. Yeah. Um I think um I don't know. I guess yeah. you do. As like Gina said, you learn a lot. Yeah, about how I think the world I just works. want the edu- Like I, I, I wish there was a way to just like learn more stuff. But because I don't have the money to keep going to school yeah. to learn all the things I really want to learn. One hundred RPM is sounding like my mom right now. <laughs> Why don't you just go to law school? You should be a lawyer. Go to law school. I no, my I parents were like, like no. <laughs> my parents were like, no, don't. You don't want to go to law school. Oh God, my um, my mother tried to bribe me. Oh really. Yeah, when I was graduating undergrad with a communications and theater degree, <laughs> she goes, she goes, um, you know, your father and I would pay for grad school if you do business school or law school. And I was like, well, no. So I'm just going to turn down that for money. Yeah. I, yeah, I think it's just fascinating. The whole, like, I always think, I wish there were just um, more pamphlets. <laughs> I just want pamphlets on on topic. Like, and I'm not even talking about new paper, like make recycled, recycle the paper and just mm-hmm. make pamphlets on things I'd like to know yeah. about. Like, 
theater degree sounds great. sounds great. Yeah. It was so fun. I did yoga for the actor. I did speech for the actor. I did two levels of stage combat for college credit. <laughs> and for my senior capstone, I wrote a five page paper on the Protestant ignorant interregnum in Britain. Uh, it was so freaking easy. <laughs> That's nice. I did, I, did some fun, theater. I did some theater in my, in different areas, but I, English, you could, you know, yeah. You stuff in. I did yeah. film, I did creative writing. I did, I had a class in graduate school called acting, uh, acting for writers, which was super fun. That sounds um, cool. So like, yeah, I've had like, they, those classes are really fun as compared. And I took documentary film. That was like one of my favorite classes ever. Um, I wish I took more of those, but like, I yeah. Think, I think that required curriculum nowadays should include media literacy. Yeah. For because sure. don't you know a lot because you took that film class? Oh yeah. Like, you know a lot of things. Yeah. I took that. I took a, a photojournalism class. It was more like analyzing, but it taught me so many things. Yeah. I think you just need a well-rounded, like, um, I'm teaching a class right now that focuses on pop culture and it's um true you're watching <laughs> right 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 all that money uh, more well spent. <laughs> uh but um uh I'm teaching an English class that focuses on pop culture right now and it's cool to see how media stuff you know you to use it as text and have mm -hmm. the students go through and analyze it one of their topics for their papers was to watch like they had to follow a certain social media and write about it. And one of the options was TikTok. So like some of the students were like, wait, my assignment could be to watch TikTok for hours. And I was like, yeah. And they were like, but I already do that. And I was like, great. Well, get some credit for it. <laughs> yeah. you, you've unlocked it. You've there, were unlocked more it. there were more parameters than that, but essentially right. it was, oh, wait, I get to just do what I do. Uh, yeah, exactly. But you have to think critically about it. Right, right. And I actually did a full example using Leslie Jones and like came up with like an academic argument. And I was like, cool. I even felt like, damn. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. So it's fun. Like, I think media literacy is important. Yeah. And I think learning how to man not manipulate it and to learn how it's manipulated is important because otherwise uh -huh. you get dodo birds who <laughs> believe everything. <they> yeah. <laughs> it's funny yeah. that we got onto that topic because tonight's subject is a radio charlatan. Ooh, okay. This is like, I, I, From feel, the like depression. All, I feel like it hits all of your levels my thing like radio. asshole people on the radio it's radio just felt like that would be timely for some reason yeah i saw I something about why. hotels in the description which is like haunted hotels uh haunted like yeah it hits all of your favorites yes so it's this very exciting has everything <laughs> <laughs> scams yachts oh man. purple hotel rooms okay let's get started let's so this is the story of the con man norman baker and adjacently, the Crescent Hotel in Arkansas. Cool. My sources were Wikipedia, the Encyclopedia of Arkansas, the Crescent Hotel websites, because they run two of those. Uh, we will get into that, why they do that. Uh, an episode of Ghost Adventures, <laughs> KLOR10 News, a news report from them, and a blog post by Anna Cavett Fisher. And I like I thought there weren't going to be a lot of at first when I went into this, I didn't find a lot of sources. But then as I Googled different things, I found more sources. So that's very um, I was very happy. So let's start with dude's photo. This this is his mugshot It's the only photo I've been able to find of this man, even though he was a big deal on the radio in the Depression. Um. Oh, the chat's still on top of that. I'll just move the chat box back so that we don't. Um, he owned his own radio station. So keep going. You know what? Delete. You know what? No, because I got to unlock you. What are we doing? There we go. Okay. Um, okay. So as far as I can find out, Norman Baker only made money on one thing in his life that was not a total scam. And it is that thing pictured there, the Kaleophone. He, it's so small, I know. The cage? Well, that's, yeah, that's related because the it's it's an air version of the calliope, which is the instrument that goes do-do-do-do. Like it makes that fairground music, that air, like the pipes. 
Yeah. So he invented an air Kalia phone. It's probably the only thing that he did in his life that wasn't a scam or a lie. He was born the youngest of 10 children in 1882 in Muscatine, Iowa, a very small town, but his Muscatine has a wonderful smell about it. Um, his family was wealthy. His father was an inventor and owned a lot of patents. So the family had a lot of money. Norman, I guess the rebel became a vaudeville performer, ran away and joined the vaudeville and used his natural skill and invention and machinery to invent the Kalia phone. And then he had income from that. Um, uh, we explained what it is. So next time you hear a Kalia phone at the carnival, just remember it was invented by a murderer. <clears throat> Ta-da. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if it's an air powered one, I did, I found you can, if you Google Kaliophone music, YouTube, and I, I downloaded the video, but the format wouldn't work to show it in the stream. If you, if you Google Kaliophone music, YouTube, a video will come up. The first video is actually the tangly Kaliophone that he patented playing. So it's like boop 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 boop. It's the very like boom boop boop boom 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 boom. I not listen. Why am I why am I trying to do that? Google is your friend. So while he's in on his vaudeville circuit traveling around, he comes across a mentalist performer and he's like, Oh, I can lie to people for money. Awesome. This is my life's work now. So he creates his own mentalist show, travels around with it. I am not knocking any real psychics. We know that his was fake because he kept replacing the so-called mentalist, but every single time they were always called mind reader Pearl Tangley. Huh? Her name was Pearl Tangley and she was a mind reader. Yeah. So, right, mind reader is the title, but it would always be Pearl. So like it was a different person a cup every couple of weeks, but they were always, there's Pearl. Like it's not Pearl. Okay. That's just a scam. Yeah. And... 1924, Baker is back in Muscatine, Iowa, and he realizes, oh my goodness, on the radio, you can lie to more people and get even more money out of them. So he goes and does that. Uh, he goes to the town council of Muscatine, Iowa, and says, here is the deal. I'm going to build a radio station. And if you give me, and if you help me that, you help me build it, and you give me free electricity, free water, and no taxes ever. I will go on the radio and I will talk about how Muscatine is super cool. And then people will come here and you will live in a cool place and then profit. And no one was ever like, do you know anything about radio engineering? Do you know anything about building transmitters? But it's 1924. It's the boom before the Great Depression. There's like rivers of money. Homeboy is very charismatic and enthusiastic. So the town fathers are like, cool. Awesome. Great. Sounds good. So he builds his own radio station. And uh, yes, yes, he's not dumb. Built a radio station? No, he's no. Oh, gee, wait, no Hold sound. On. I have sound. I have sound from Gina. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's okay, back. It's back. Oh, mm, maybe your microphone didn't come over to that mm -hmm. screen. That's fine. We're done with that screen. <laughs> um, fuck that screen. We're never going to see it again. Uh, so his radio station is KTNT. It goes on the air in 1925, which is fast um, to build a radio station from scratch. Yeah. But these are like the pioneer days of radio. The call letters stand for Know the Naked Truth. I don't I don't know if that means he invented truth bombs, also because TNT, haha. <laughs> so Norman's deal is basically going on air and being like, everyone is a scam. I'm the only one who's not a scam, and everyone is out to get me because they're a scam and I'm not. He's like, every all the other broadcasters are against me. I hate them. I hate Catholics. I hate Jews, popular <laughs> at the time. Like, um, all the political groups are out to silence me. They're attacking me. I'm going to sue everybody. I'm suing everyone for libel. Uh, 
And because KTNT broadcast at 10,000 watts, which is massive for a radio station, Mm -hmm. it reached pretty much the entire Midwest. So this is like a huge station. The AM stations don't exist like that anymore because of FCC regulation, because the it's um, the frequency band is so narrow. And Mm -hmm. so you have to so they restrict the, the wattage so that like you can only be on in a certain area. Is that because um, so you no know more stations? Okay, so there's not a mono- Is it because there's so there's not a monopoly? Yes, airtime or airspace or whatever. It right is? at at the at the beginning, and now there are monopolies. But um, <laughs> right, the original intent. Uh, so you can be on like so. For instance, ninety three point three. What I used to be a broadcast engineer for works in Philadelphia and you start to lose it as you get out to the Poconos. But when we were in the Poconos doing broadcasting, we would take over because we were the more powerful station, the geographic, whatever was geographically broadcasting on 93.3, which was like high school basketball play by play. Huh. But we would turn on our broadcast, our transmitter to broadcast back to the our site. Mm-hmm. And it was so much more powerful that it got the right of way. And those poor children. Hmm. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so KTNT is all over the place. And Norman Baker is a dick mm-hmm. uh, to everyone. He hates everything. But <laughs> because it reached so many people, he becomes a thing. Right. As you know, radio is very good to mediocre men. Um, <laughs> he uh, has all this money. He starts a magazine called TNT Magazine and a newspaper, the Midwest Free Press. Uh, So now he kind of triangulates the media. So he he's got these other news sources that you can go to for the quote unquote truth, because all the other media is out to get him. And he's on the radio saying, well, look what's in the magazine and the paper. And he's in the paper going, look what's on the radio. So So his his scam is basically his scam so far is just to. Put the other radio scam. Okay, okay. We're getting so he's trying to paint it that his radio station is the only one that's legit. He's right. He's the little guy. He's fighting against the giants who want to take him down. He's just for freedom and blah blah blah. We're okay. getting to the scam. Um, okay, but he, this is like this is his way of like sinking right. into the scam, right? right. And he's like so right because also it's his station, so he can advertise anything he wants, right? And he starts to claim that all kinds of things are curing cancer or causing cancer because that's where we go. He's like, your aluminum cookware is giving you cancer. The fluoride in your water is giving you cancer. Testing cows for tuberculosis gives people cancer. Um, this It's funny reading that. That lie has not really disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. I had a yoga teacher tell me in the 2010s that fluoride blocks up the frontal lobe of your brain. Oh, there's a dentist here on Route 100 in uh, Exton. They have like huge signs about fluoride being like not literally the devil, but it's something I'm I'm exaggerating, but yeah. not greatly. <laughs> like all these like, and I'm always like that. It it looks very conspiratorial. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's fluoride like is to control us. Yeah. Yeah. If you've ever seen an ad. An, an online ad that's like 10 secrets doctors don't want you to know about getting rid of belly fat. That's what this is. <laughs> that's what he becomes because this is where his curing cancer scam gets off the ground because he's like, all these things give you cancer. What do you do then when you've got laid all this groundwork, you can steer people into the thing that's going to take it away. That coincidentally makes you a lot of money. Hmm. So this is where, and, you know, historians have said if he had just stuck to railing against every single person that he hated, he would have died a rich man who was just, you know, himself. But he flew too close to the sun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think th- I wonder I thinking about this today because I was listening to that other podcast and we can talk about it in a little bit, but I just want to put it out there so, so I don't forget about it. But there must be there seems to be an addiction like once you once you scam there seems to be an addiction to i don't know if that's the right word yeah. or a compulsion to want to make it go further and to the point of insanity to the point right. where it's so unbelievably like 
people don't seem to stay in a nice pocket of scam. Right. You know, where they have a good thing going and they just sustain that. It's always right. blows up. Right. And I'm curious what that is, like what the personality yes. thing is. But go ahead. I'm, I just yeah. want to put that out there for later. Right. So this is when he starts to blow up the scam. Okay. And also there's that thing too where you realize you can tell one lie and get away with it. So you just start making everything a lie because you can. And it, it's like, why? Why lie about this? You don't need to. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see a couple examples of that. Um, so he starts the Baker Institute, a medical institute in his um, home right. of I love, I love it. I love it. Again, has he ever studied medicine a day in his life? He has not. But he wants to cure cancer. So he brings in, he's he's heard about this new miracle cure from a man named Charles Ozias. And he brings on to work with him a man named Harry Hoxley. And Harry Hoxley has just been released from serving his sentence for being a quack doctor. Cool. Yeah, so we're not even pretending. Uh, so Baker does this big to do on his radio station. He's like, I'm going to bring this miracle cure here. We're going to test it out. I've picked out five test subjects. We'll investigate ourselves, whether this is really the cure. All five of the patients died. <laughs> However, that doesn't really matter when you have a radio station, a newspaper and a magazine that can say whatever you want them to say. And that's what he did. He printed st stories that say the miracle cure actually worked. He printed it right after the first patient died. And subsequently, every few weeks or months when the next patient died, he would just rerun the same good news, it worked paper on his in his magazine and printed in his newspaper. And then he'd talk about how great it was on the radio. And where could you go to pay your money to get this wonderful cure? His own institute. Because what, I mean, because what would he have done? I've I've been wondering this, like, why would he go with it if it was obviously not working, if it was obviously a scam? Right. But he didn't have any ideas. He didn't have any way to cure cancer. He would have like, what would his what would his institute do? Nothing. He was kind of this, it's like this idea or no ideas. That's it. So there was no point at which he ever thought that this actually cured cancer. I cannot see that there was ever a point. And it was just come to my clinic. Give me your money. I'll give you the cure. And the cure was an injection of water, corn silk, watermelon seed, clover, and carbolic acid that you would inject into the tumor. And what year was this again? This is 1930-ish. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> he even did a hoax open-air surgery. This seems earlier than 1930. Like this lie seems like people in the 1930s should have been kind of up on that. Haven't you ever seen a, a, a post on Facebook that's like, drink lemon water every day and you'll never get cancer? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, I honestly, in reading about him, I think that he would have been successful today. Yeah. You just market it differently, right? Right, yeah. right. He did a hoax open air surgery. He made it look like they were cutting into a man's brain live outside in front of all these people for you to see and putting on the the miracle cancer cure. And oh my goodness. But of course, it was all faked. He drank the cure <gasps> to prove that it was safe. But like it's watermelon seed and clover. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. So couldn't you hurt? I mean, I don't mean to sound dumb. But isn't it dangerous to be injecting things into other people's bodies? Yes. yes. It's yes. Very dangerous. I mean, Very it sounds dangerous. like an obtuse thing to ask, but I, I'm serious. Like, even though it's innocuous stuff, it seems like something could go very wrong. Yeah. I'm, you, I'm, I'm, I'm holding this up because I'm going to cut it, not because I want <laughs> you to look at it. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. You can't just go injecting things into people's tumors. Yeah. It just doesn't yeah. seem right. Very dangerous. Because, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so where is the AMA in all of this? You're thinking, I know they were there. They caught wind <laughs> and they were like, no, wait, hold on. Please do not inject people with corn silk and watermelon. That is bad news bears. You will die. Don't give this man your money. So Norman Baker, being the media genius that he is, Turns that into, well, look what big medicine wants oh my you to God. think. 
big meta. He claims that they offered him a million dollars to give them the cure so that they could keep it out of the public so that they could do more surgeries and get more money. He's like, doctors love to cut you. Doctors don't want you to know. You know, there's that reference again. It's basically like if the Kim Kardashians are hawking flat belly tea Mm -hmm. and flat belly tea can kill you. Right. Right. It seems this seems like very well, I don't want to. It's just what? it's junk science, but you're right. right. It 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 would work. It yeah. this would so work now. Yeah, I could yeah. see it happening. I mean, look at the poor people who get fake cosmetic implants that are made of like terrible things. Wait, people get fake cosmetic implants? You yeah, you don't remember the story about the the person who did she die of? She got in trouble for being a fake butt implant person? No. But it's, story. it's actually very sad. Uh, I'm not laughing. I'm only yeah. laughing because it's butts. It's not a funny story. Butts, yeah. I'm sure. It's just butts are funny. Yeah. Uh, um, like fillers and stuff. It's like. But it was fake fillers? Yeah. Holy shit. And it wasn't a licensed person, but it was cheaper. And this person, you know, if you really want it and it's cheaper, you can take a chance that it's not poison, but sometimes it's poison. That woman, the one who invented that thing, they made a whole documentary about her. I don't know her name. I don't know what she invented. It was some blood thing that was all a lie. Oh, yes, yes. Isn't that Elizabeth, kind of is this? Elizabeth Holmes? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. That is essential oils now. Oh, yes. Right, right. It's exactly, it's exactly the same thing. Like he, we, it's easy to look at this as a relic of the past, it's but. Not, you're right. You're right. We, it's, it's never gone away. It's absolutely never gone away. And um, I love the Elizabeth Holmes documentaries because, yeah, she like she's a she's a liar and she's a scammer and everything was BS. But she tricked rich old white dudes who thought no little blonde lady could trick them, and it was so obvious. They just had to ask obvious questions. Ugh, anyway, um, what is it about con people? It's I find it so. I would be terrified to to like market in that kind of lie. I would be, I feel sick all the time with worry. I'm not a good liar. Like, I guess they are just, they can just lie on a lie and not, not even blink, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. He's just lying through his teeth. And the Institute is raking in a hundred thousand dollars a month (gasps) right now. Oh no. In 1930s dollars. During the depression. We didn't need to start a Twitch. We needed to open a, a clinic. <laughs> right. We need to be fake health gurus. Right. But, we, but the Holy Spirit, we feel bad. That's the problem. Yeah. I don't want to make the baby Jesus cry. I mean, but no, that's not even that. I don't want to hurt people. Right. I just don't want to lie right. and hurt. Like, I don't want to kill people. I don't want to hurt them. I don't want to take people's money if I don't deserve it. So it's just, it's just right. morals. <laughs> it's just it's value. holding us back. I know. Our consciences are holding us back from being kajillionaires. I know. So <laughs> stupid. <laughs> yeah. So the AMA is on the case. They're like, shut it down, please. Mm-hmm. Uh, Baker launches anti-Semitic attacks on one of the prominent doctors leading the charge against him because, of course, he does. He calls the police and says, the AMA shot up my office. There's bullet holes in it. The police investigate and find that he shot up his own office for attention. <laughs> <laughs> the town is starting to be like, we think this baker guy might not be the best sort of guy. <laughs> I think he might be lying. I be lying. <laughs> Maybe if, if only someone could do something. <laughs> there was a trial. And f- this is in 1930. There's a trial. Family members of people who died from his cancer scam testify. They tell all the stories. He's found guilty of practicing medicine without a license. And the penalty for that is one day in jail and a $50 fine. Nice. Yes. Uh, Then in 1931, his radio station was delicensed by the Federal Radio Commission, which is now the FCC, which means you can't broadcast. Uh, The license for his clinic was revoked, obviously. He is undeterred and is like, I'm going to fuck off to Mexico where there's no rules. Oh, so it is just like today. It's basically. (laughs) I'm just going to skip the country. I'm in the Caymans. Um, I'm just going to go to Cancun and drop my daughters off. (laughs) Right. And come right back. I swear. Come right back. Just going to go cure some cancer over the weekend. (laughs) (laughs) Um, 
Uh, so he buys a new radio station. It's called XENT. And it's right on the Rio Grande, which is the dividing river between the United States and Mexico. Right. So if you recall from his Midwest station that was broadcasting at 10,000 watts, it covers a whole huge area. So it kind of doesn't matter that it's not inside the United States. It's on the border and it's broadcasting into the United States. It's reaching about a million households. And of course, he's got a new clinic down in Mexico because, you know, we're going to cure cancer down here. People mm -hmm. listening to the radio, give us your money. We will inject you with the cure, which is just watermelon seeds. Still raking in money. And this is the first time they get him on a technicality. And it's going to be a pattern that becomes the only way they get him. So the authorities go, whoopsie, you, you can't take licensed music over the border. Like all of this, like Texas and Arkansas ah. music that you have, you can't, you can't export that into Mexico and play it. So like, whoopsie. And also there's an embargo on bringing in radio equipment between Mexico and the United States. So gosh, darn it. We got to shut this whole thing down. Gosh, darn. So this is where the Crescent Hotel comes in. Okay. Uh, I was wondering, I was like, wait, there's a hotel in there. here. We're going to get there. This is my, that's not it. And I'll put up my beautiful slideshow about the Crescent Hotel. <clears throat> Let's see what we get. We'll unlock that. Where is my slideshow? Hold on. I'll get it. That's okay. Slideshow. Save and close. Right. Right. So, I I bought shapewear from Instagram once and it was just that's this that's a stupid idea. Um, where are my photos? I'm getting you an image of the Crescent Hotel because it's beautiful and you deserve it. Um, yeah, I, I fall for scams too. It's fine. Right. <laughs> um, I'll do this one because it's no, I'll do this one. No, I'll do this one. Cause I'm trying to give you the fanciest because I'm I'm the Cecil Hotel manager of this of Crescent Hotel because I just feel like I was it just Right, you have to be weird. It's so fun doing this during a stream because my computer's like, no, I don't want to move. Come here. Right. Right. It's your job to talk up the hotel, right? Okay. Here we go. With much ado, here is the crescent. Let me make sure we have your microphone. Um... I know. Can everybody hear Gina? Because I don't think that you're, let me make sure that your mic is in this scene. Because this was the one that Harrison said he couldn't see you. Uh, Gina's microphone. Oh, someone just followed. Thank you. Welcome. Um, come on. I'm getting to it. 
There's Gina's microphone. Update spring stream. Oh, okay. There oh my god, is it is beautiful. Right? It looks it's so gorgeous. haunted. It's so haunted. I love that. It's so haunted. So he now we get to the Crescent Hotel in the story. The Crescent Hotel is also a character. This is where this whole thing took on the monstrousness that has made it the the kind of deal that it is. Oh, it sure. says um, Claire says my mic is going in and out. I'll let yeah. you do all the talking. Hold on. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that's that's okay. Um, uh, the Crescent Hotel is in the town of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, which is right up at the um, the border, like right on top of the state line in the Ozark Mountains. The Osage tribes. Oh, she can hear you now. Go okay, ahead. good. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, the Osage tribes considered the springs in Eureka to have healing properties. So that's kind of what the town came from. They also definitely haunted. Yes, absolutely haunted. It looks like the Overlook Hotel. And it's also yes, perched, yeah. it's perched up on the hill. Excuse me. The hill in these <laughs> mountains. So like to, the, to drive up to it, you got to go up the hill and it's overlooking everything. Nice. Like above the like... um the the rest of everything um what was i doing looks beautiful yes it's absolutely beautiful uh so the area the area has been for hundreds of years a, a place where there are healing springs um so it started as a, a tourist destination you'd go rest and relaxation you take the waters it the the waters may cure you of things so the town of eureka rises up alongside these healing springs and in 1886, the Crescent Hotel opened. It was seen as the most luxurious hotel in America. Mm. It was built to draw wealthy visitors and lots of money into Eureka. It cost about $300,000 of um, at the time to build, which is about $10 million today, which still seems low. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was built using the White River limestone found in the area, which is important if you're spooky. But it's also the reason that it's held up so well. Uh, the limestone is dense and really solid. Oh, okay. Yeah. And if you are into ghost shit, um, there's a theory that limestone... <laughs> I feel stupid. There's a theory that limestone conducts paranormal energy. So anywhere where there's a lot of limestone, there's going to be a lot of spookiness. But anyway, so here's a building made out of limestone. <laughs> all, all the rock around it is limestone. The forest is like prehistoric. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's it's such a like hilly and hard anyway yeah um great atmosphere and it's got steam heat it's got electricity in 1886 it's got a hydraulic elevator it's a huge deal it's incredibly fancy we're very excited it is running out of money by the early 20th century oh yeah so it started to become a girls boarding school and it wasn't really able to sustain itself that way either and then the depression hits so by the time Norman Baker is looking for a new scam spot, this place was a deal. They were looking to unload. So he was able to leave Mexico for something else. He left Mexico and bought this hotel. <laughs> it's like showed up with a suitcase full of money. And it's like, how much for this entire hotel? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the Norman Baker that shows up in 1937 because he had a look. He is described as B-movie star handsome. He's incredibly confident. He has hypnotic eyes. He has luscious, wavy white hair. He's incredibly dapper. We're talking like zaddy vibes. <laughs> He's always wearing a suit. In the summer, it's white suits. In the, in the winter, it's gray pinstripes. There's always a lilac shirt. Everything he wears is purple as much as he can. He has a custom purple car. Why purple? He just likes purple. Okay. He just likes purple. It's, you know, he's decided that he's, he's doing a bit and the bit is purple. It's custom color. Uh, yes. And it's it's the height of the depression. Okay. He's splashing this ostentatious wealth around. He's got like a diamond encrusted tie pin <laughs> and a diamond like watch fob. It's like such thick gold. And he shows up in his custom car. Everything's purple. He's like, I want to buy your hotel. There are reports that he actually changed the decor of the crescent inside so that everything was head to toe shades of purple as well, which that is a war crime against a historic building. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so 
this charismatic guy, he's got a look. You can probably get a feel for how he was able to bamboozle so many people. He was just so fancy. Mm -hmm. Now, and his idea for it to open a new clinic really fits in well with the history of the place. The narrative is already there. You've got these healing springs. You've got this like history as a place of healing. And so he calls the hotel a castle in the clouds. He calls <laughs> it um, the Switzerland of America. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, oh, it's over here. Uh, and it's like, it's it reminds me of the very fancy like passages in Malibu um, rehab centers in Hollywood where all of the stars go. It's just like, come, we have luxury amenities. Um, what was I going to, I need you to add your microphone to this one because I have um, one of their posters, which just really gets into it that... This is the Cancer Cure Hotel. Um, oh, people go here for their treatments. Yes. So <laughs> this becomes, yeah, this becomes, let's do that. Death House. Um, yeah, right? Yeah. So I, I know you can't read it. Uh, so it says um, Cancer Tumor Curable. Uh when where sick folks get well and it's there's the the cat like the castle in the clouds kind of thing there's the hotel situated over the grand vistas and everything um and all right so he's he's releasing these um you know these pamphlets and everything with these pictures and like what a wonderful we're curing cancer he's just coming out and saying it and you know um and there's no regulation to stop him. Nobody's like. Well, I mean, I thought about that. I thought about looking up when the FDA was instituted. But honestly, I mean, look at today. All you have to do is say, these statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. True. And you can do whatever you want. True. So he's left to his own devices in the Ozarks. And the horrible scam gets worse. So I the cure. So I, yeah, this so it's such a bad idea <laughs> yeah so the cure which we've already discussed is watermelon clover corn silk and carbolic acid but now he's also able to say it has the famous healing waters from eureka in it too and probably charge extra but those so waters are also a scam right there's no such thing as healing water probably not i mean it depends on what you believe okay it's like you know the water at lords or whatever Okay. You know, you know, you healing waters. Yeah. Depends. Yeah. Um, so what they would do to give people the cure is to inject it into the patient's tumor. I said that. But they would have up to seven injections a day while they're staying <laughs> with the hotel. No. And according to patients' later testimony, it was excruciating. Oh, no. I know. Which, Aww. like, first of all, you know it doesn't work. You don't have to give seven. You can also seven, save money. right? Why seven? Why se You can save a lot of watermelon and corn silk money. Two. You just do two. One at night, one during the, yeah, seven. You running at him. But the money he spent on <laughs> corn silk and carbolic acid, he saved on painkillers because he didn't believe in them. Or maybe <laughs> just didn't want to buy them. So patients who were in pain and got a little too loud about it would be isolated in one room on the third floor so that they wouldn't freak out the other patients and the other people who were there to fork over their money for the miracle cure. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, it's basically a room where you go to die in horrible pain from cancer. Oh, no. It's, it's yes, it's, it's absolutely terrible. I remember when my grandmother had end-stage colon cancer and she was at home in hospice and had a prescription for morphine and it's bad it's bad yeah. and they were the nurses were like you know you don't you don't need to ration it at the end mm -hmm. just like pour it all out there because it's excruciating it's excruciating so fuck this guy so much uh he just, the point is just to make money and you can't yes. think of another yeah. less murdery and terrible way to scam people. Yeah. Yeah. It's just to <sighs> make boxes and boxes of money. <sighs> and you know, there were reports that they would take suitcases, suitcases of money out every night. 
um, they had to create a morgue because this wasn't a hospital. This was a hotel. So they turned a cold storage facility, which had probably been a pantry into the morgue. And in the lobby, so the thing on the right is a poster of the specimen jars in the lobby of the hotel so that anyone could see who was coming to ask about the services. All of these specimen jars were displayed. There were big ones. There were small ones. It's all kinds of weird looking things. They were there to show proof. They were, look at these gross tumors. This is cancer that we've cured. The poster on the specimen jars says, we have proof of our success. And then at the top, in small print, it says, cancer is curable, we cure cancer. But on the other poster, on the left, it also says they cure cancer without surgery, lasers, x-rays, um, or radiation. And no one ever said to him, babe, you can't hear me right now. Put your no, I could hear on. you. Okay. I could hear you. Yeah. Okay. So no one ever says to this guy, why, why the jars? Because if you, if you can cure it without surgery, how do you get, how do you get the, the tumors out? Do they just like jump off? Is it like, why, <laughs> how, but he's like, no, nah, no, nah, we're going to put a, a bunch of jars and that people will, people will buy it. And they did. No one was like, why are the jars? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, and so he's preying on an incredibly desperate population. Yeah, people, they yeah. want, they're primed to want to believe anything. These yeah, can because be people, they're suffering right. and they're good. They, a lot of people have a death sentence anyway. And I hate to say it, like at that time, it's probably a, a sure death sentence. And so they're looking for anything. Right. And if it's your last chance, everything mm -hmm. else has not worked. Uh, that you could for you fork over every last dollar because here's one more chance that your loved one could survive. He says it's a miracle cure. He says he has proof. There's all of this money floating around. How could it be if it was a scam, right? And they died in excruciating pain because this man was a con man. Awful. Yeah. He was so fake. And this is the part about lying for lying's sake. He sent out a promo photo saying here here we are showing movies to patients and even that was a lie it was <laughs> cl so clearly a composite photo where they like cut and pasted a movie screen and a projector ray and some people it like why why yo is lying but what's the point i think that's what i was talking about earlier is that right. there's there's something about this person out or this mental health thing or personality or what, I don't know what it is, compulsion, that you're not satisfied in just getting your, like if you achieve your scam, you have to keep going until it blows up. And I don't know. Right. What is it about that? Because if you think about right. it, it all, they always end in spectacular. Right. Uh, you know, in a spectacular fashion. It's, right. it, I mean, like, I'm sure there's people who sustain cons for years and years and years, but eventually they go too far. Right. It's like, just just stop lying when the lies are working and you'll be fine. Like, mm -hmm. you'll be fine forever. So he operates outside the reach of any kind of law or regulation. And actually, there's there are some reports that the Arkansas state government didn't really want to shut him down because he was making so much money for the town. Oh no. Like this was the only this was the big business in Eureka Springs. Yuck. They're like, but our jobs. Uh, I know. Yuck. I know. Capitalism. Mm -hmm. Yay. Uh, then, then in 1940, he makes the fatal mistake of sending promo materials through the mail. And that's mail fraud. Oh, that is? Because you're not allowed to lie through the, the mail. mail. Really? Yeah. If yeah. I sent you a letter that was all lies, it would be fraud? If it was business stuff, if oh. you sent me a, a postcard that said, please buy my services, I cure cancer. Oh, okay. Then that's, that's mail generic fraud. lies. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, saw, I saw unicorn today. My hair is green. this woman. <laughs> jail. Right to jail. <laughs> Immediately jail. Do not pass go. So... <sighs> They're like, all right, we got him. It's mail fraud. Amazing. Seven counts of mail fraud. He was found guilty. Um, a jury also Good. found that his cure was an absolute scam once and for all. Thank God. He served four years at Leavenworth, Kansas and paid a $4,000 fine. because That's that, it? That's the punishment for mail fraud. 
four years. And they couldn't get him on anything else. Wait, so, they couldn't get him on anything else. They didn't try to get him people? on anything else. Um, ah, These statements have not been vetted by the FDA. <sighs> I mean, I don't know. Awful, uh, awful. I know. I know. I know. It's there so should be incredibly a way. Bad. To prey on sick people, it's like there's, there's, I mean, there's few things worse. Right. Honestly, it's so pathetic. Right. It's, yes. It's so, I hate him so much. Yeah. So in, in true him fashion, he gets out of jail and just marches right back into Muscatine, Iowa, and is like, I'm going to open another clinic for healing. And the town is like, no, <laughs> no, you are not. Fool us a thousand times. Shame on us. Mm -hmm. Like, It's taken 15 years, but we finally, <laughs> we finally know that you are a scam. So he takes all of his money that he scammed from cancer patients because he didn't have to give it up. It was just mail fraud. And he retired to Miami. And 18 years later, he died while aboard his three-story yacht. Ew. Uh, yeah. He basically so no got away with it. consequences, yeah. Yeah, he basically cool, got cool. away with it. So who's haunting? Oh, the people who died are haunting. Yes, we're going to get them. into it. Um, the estimate is that he scammed cancer sufferers out of $4 million, which is in today's money is almost $10 million. Oh, my God. I think that's just from the hotel. Oh my God. He is known as the greatest showman who ever lived, and he was once quoted as saying he could reap a million dollars out of the suckers in this state. Um, fuck him, though. The Crescent Hotel is super interesting. Mm -hmm. So after, after this guy, the Crescent Hotel sat empty for 50-plus years. Oh, that's a shame. Then, I know. It's this beautiful shame. building. But again, like we said, because it was made of this limestone, it didn't decay. It was still in really, really good shape. So it was bought in 1997 by Marty and Elise Regnick, I think is how you say it. Hmm. And it reopened in the 2000s. They took out all the purple. It's very fancy now. They have like a wedding terrace and Ooh. you can stay in like the, the tower houses, the tower, like they call them tree houses mm -hmm. or treetops. They have balcony and jacuzzi rooms and like whirlpool rooms. And... They put a huge focus on the history of the place. They're, they oh, that's created cool. like museums within the hotel where you can learn about the women's college, the original hotel, obviously Norman Baker's monstrosities. Uh, they sell a walking tour map of the hotel and the grounds and everything for two bucks at the oh. front desk. It's like, and this room is this and that room is that. That's cool. You can actually stay in the room that was his office. No, thank you. I know. Uh, it was named Best of the South by Southern Living in 2017. But again, I will never, never, never stay there because it's super haunted. On finding out that their hotel had a reputation as America's most haunted hotel, the owners were like, you know what? Let's let's lean into that. There's a revenue stream there. Yeah, of course. And the hotel hosts their own nightly ghost tours. Oh, they that's have cool. Their own, they have their own like ghost staff on the premises. I want to go there. Yeah, I want to go there, but I don't want to stay there. Uh, and obviously, you have to stay there. You could stay somewhere else. I know, but where else is there? There's another. There's another hotel in Eureka. It's called the Basin Springs. Uh, so obviously, one reason it's probably haunted was because there's so much suffering. Right. Yes. And it, it's kind of like gets in the walls. And if you believe in that, the limestone like conducts it. Uh, so people claim to see a little boy. There's a little boy mm -hmm. who got sick and died. There's the ghost of a stonemason named Michael who died while building the hotel. And some of his sculptures are still in the lobby. He uh, can be seen and felt in his room, I think, mostly. There, um, the pain room, the room that people were isolated in when they were too loud uh, gives people overwhelming anguish and people hear sounds and disembodied voices in the pain room. There is a woman in the mist who can be seen going over the third floor balcony. They don't oh know whether, gosh. yeah, they don't know whether she was jumped, pushed or fell. They don't know anything about her. There are a bunch of apparitions caught on camera that they host on their website. <laughs> uh, there's one spot in the hallway on the third floor where people faint for no reason just like random <laughs> fainting. And it's no, that's the only third floor where they kept the people who died. Right. Yeah. Right. The pain room on the third floor. Exactly. Um, and 
this is a weird coincidence, but at some point way back in the building's history, they had had a medium go through it or diff different like mediums, psychic mediums. And one of them said, there's a vortex right here in this, in this hallway on the third floor between dimensions. And they're like, that's stupid. And now today that's the place where everybody faints. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, guests also, they also claim that they heard nur nurses pushing the old timey gurneys through the hallways. Um, but ghost adventures actually debunked that that was the radiators. Mm. Uh, the ghost. I think this, this warrants a crime and cookies trip. Field trip. Yeah. Let's do it. They have their, the rooms are decent prices. You can get like the, but castles. you said you wouldn't stay there. I don't know. <laughs> if we're listen, if it's for science, if it's for it's our just, job, I I'll think do it. It'd be really fun. I'll do it. Um, I've never been to Arkansas. Me neither. We can. It's like two hundred thirty dollars a night for the best room. That's nice. And they have a bed and breakfast deal for like breakfast. Yeah. Um. And the town is cute. It's like very retro. Uh. So the ghost tour also includes a walk through the Baker Morgue. Uh, that cold storage that he used as a morgue. And there's a photo of him watching you as you inspect his specimen jars. And the specimen jars are the last latest piece of news about the Crescent Hotel. They were unearthed in 2019. Oh, wow. Yeah. So remember the poster that I had of, of all the jars? Yeah. And we were like, why? So while the hotel was building a new patio, they were doing the construction, they came upon hundreds of jars um and just preserve just put in the earth buried in the earth very deliberately it's like they dug out a place and then they put in all these jars mm -hmm. and it looked like what was inside could be remains could be human remains hmm. it could also be pig's feet because this guy was a liar who knows <laughs> um <laughs> it could be like fish guts yeah so they are investigating. They had archaeologists come out. They had university people like they're testing at what they could do. So those are the jars that used to be displayed in the lobby. Oh, cool. And because of the, the ghost tour every night, they actually, that poster with all of the jars, they hung that in the, um, in the morgue. So you see that while you're on the tour. Right. Cool. And because of seeing that every day, the guy who leads the ghost tours was able to go, oh, these jars are those things. And then other people who had worked there at the time who are still alive in town were like, oh yeah, we remember those jars. So, <laughs> um, so now they're going to do the, they're going to put them for display in the, the morgue place so mm -hmm. that you can see them. Um, so they're the proof of our success sample jars. Uh, gross. Uh, so gross. Yes. So they were right. They were probably buried to hide them. Yeah. After everything went down with Norman and they had to get rid of everything. They're like, get this out of here. Yeah. Uh, and the Crescent is super interesting. And why I just like it so much because it is doing both things at once. They actually have two separate websites. And two separate booking phone numbers. One, what their one website is crescent-hotel.com. The slogan is live the legend. That's the like glamorous hotel, best of the South. Isn't it grand views of the thing? And they also run America's most haunted hotel.com tagline, scare up some lifetime memories. And that is just like, here are all our ghost pictures. That's cool. So they're they're just like, we are both. Yeah. But we understand these may not want to mingle, so we'll just give them separate. Right. That's really so. cool, though. I like the idea. I mean, especially if it's like, like if it's nicely kept and like refurbished. Yeah. Yeah. If it was like gross and like shady, I would never. But if it's, it's not nice. The it's yeah. not the sequel. It's not the sequel. Yeah. I would never. Never. Ooh. My computer unplugged itself. Guy. Sorry, I was doing a lot of work today. And where is your plug, sweetheart? I'll find it. Um, there it is. It's, my plug situation is embarrassing. Um, <laughs> my engineer boss would be so mad at me. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's, I find that fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and how they really, like take care of the history there. Uh, 
It's and smart that. because, you know, then you're going to keep a it's revenue strong. and you're going to get people for, like you said, two things. Some people just want to be there for the, for the, like, for the glamour and then people who want the ghost stuff. And then you don't have to. Yeah. Right. And it's almost come full circle and gone back around to what it was originally intended to be, which is that nice hotel that mm-hmm. is beautiful scenery. So. Very cool. Yeah, so that is the story of Norman Baker and his cancer scam, which lasted for 15 years. There was an article, and I can't remember the exact title. I want to see if I can go back and find it, but it was something about – it was about – it was talking about uh, Trump and politics – that was the the origin. That was the intent of it. But it was talking about why people are drawn to and like a con man. Like why people. It's almost like that they ignore the obvious point that it's a con that you're being conned. Like it's overlooked, and why they're drawn right. to it. And I don't remember. I don't remember. I want to go back and find it and reread it because I find that interesting. In the same way that I find it interesting that people can be. Yeah, convinced, like we were talking about, convinced on a small level, you know, that beauty products will work down to a, a, a huge level that they can be, you know, radicalized in in, yeah. a, in like a completely like change their, like make them join militant groups. Like right. that whole spectrum to me is fascinating because what is it about when you join into something, like part of you has to know in the beginning, like this isn't real. But at the same time, you ignore that impulse. Is that it? I I don't like what is it? You don't get bombarded with the whole thing at once. It's like how a lot of beauty and lifestyle and wellness influencers got hoodwinked by the QAnon stuff. Okay. You you get people from where they are and then you like swoop them in. So they would start with like save the children. Because obviously, who does not want to save children? Save and all no, of them, please. Right. <laughs> and so QAnon, it's like, we'll save the children. Obviously, save the children. Terrible things are happening to children. Oh, gosh, we have to stop it. Uh, they're being trafficked. Oh, no, what do I do? Well, it's celebrities who are drinking their blood because they're lizard people. So, like, you don't get yeah, to but the then you like, bye, I'm gone. That's, uh, that's, that's I, over my head. <laughs> are you, I would like to think. Or is it like – because I, like I said, like I'm not immune to it. Like I keep buying things that I know are not going to work, but like I'll read the reviews, which are obviously not review, real reviews, and I'm like, well, sounds sounds good. But I know in my heart, but I keep doing it. Yeah. And like I know that's a dumb example, but it's like – that to it's me not. is like how it works is that you're just like, well, seems legitimate. Other people are going along with it, and then before long you're – you know, storming the Capitol. Right. And, you know, like, how did I get here? My vitamin C is right. not as effective as I hoped. Right. It's just like, what, like, how did you, yeah. how does that happen? I think part of it too is what we were discussing before about media literacy. Yeah. Like I've seen people share things on Facebook and even the the headline is not what they are saying that it is. And I'm like, so this is not, Yeah. So it's that you want it to be like you want it to be true or like is it that you're too far gone? Like, do you really believe it? Do you believe it until it gets to a certain point, but you're already invested so much that you're like, I can't turn back now or I you want to believe it? Like, maybe it's all of those things. I so there's a tipping point where your ability to tell good, reliable sources from unreliable sources is very necessary right so if you're clicking on like lemons versus cancer.com and thinking it's the same information as like cnn or right the mayo clinic then if you can't tell the difference then you're gonna say oh why isn't anyone talking about the fact that drinking lemon water means you never get cancer mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then so if you're if you're in the like in the q pipeline <laughs> And someone you know, one of your friends, someone you wouldn't guess would lie to you, and mm-hmm. they probably believe it themselves, sends you something, and you can't tell that it's not a reliable source, you might be. Right. right. It's it's sort of like, because it's easy, I think it's, I fall into it too, it's easy to laugh at something and be like, what, is that person dumb? But at the same time, not always. Sometimes it's just a like a, 
they fell down a, a rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's like bra- brainwashing. I don't, like, it's very interesting to me. It's like, for as much as I'm, con- for as much as I'm interested in why con people con, like, what did they get right. out of it? It's not just money. Right. Or there's they- other ways to, to con and you can like, they go sometimes, like some people go so far to the point of like, like danger. Like this guy went beyond, way beyond. Yeah. And he, he didn't really have to make yeah. money. Yeah. yeah. And he didn't really have consequences. So for me, it's not just money. It's uh, to me, it has to be something else. Like, well, I guess it's like that he wanted to do it, but like, what is that? What does that mean? Like, what are you getting from it? What else are you getting from it? But right. then on the other side, I guess people need to get something from being con. There's right? a very powerful need to belong that we have as humans. So, you know, you can overlook, you might, you might overlook a lot of weird stuff at first in the conspiracy theory group, because you like posting and you like talking to people. But then as you hear it more and more often, Mm -hmm. you start to believe it. I I was in, I grew up, I came up around the time of 9-11 truthery. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, uh, I just thought of, wait, I, you know what? I just thought of something and it left my brain, but it, uh, it just left my brain. Shoot. Well, you can think. I have another point. Go ahead. Um, it's interesting that the effect that it has is only what, like the, the con person gins up this entire movement and people are so invested in it. And then the the power of it is only what they decide it is. So like this guy... He started out as a basically the inventor of shock jocks on the radio, just hating right. everybody. <laughs> right. He just stayed with that, but his goal was to make a lot of money. And so he took all of the brainwashing and all of the conditioning that he was doing and funneled it into making money. He could have funneled it into something else. Right. He could have stormed the Capitol. <laughs> oh, that's that's what I was gonna say. Uh I remember I mean, I'll remember I always remember or when I talk think about these things, I always think of, sorry, Leah Remini's mom when she got to a certain point in Scientology, and a couple other people say this too, I think in her show and and in the uh, Going Clear, where you get to a certain level and you're like, holy shit, this is all made up. But you've already invested your your entire life and all of your money. Yeah. And so they're just like, what am I, like, what do I do at this point? Like, I'm not just gonna, then you have to think about whether or not you're going to walk away because walking away means you're like people disconnect from you and you lose every, you lose your job, you lose your livelihood, you lose everybody in your life. All that money is for nothing. Yeah. And so you have to decide if when you get to that point, and I wonder if people get there where they're like, shit, I invested so much in this. That I can't turn, I can't say yeah. to people now, like, oh, oh, looks like there's no queuing on. You know what I mean? Like, right. you just have to right. keep going. And I think some people get, I think that there are some people in on it. Like, I think some politicians play the game of pretending to believe in it because it serves like right. a certain which a, is a base. Dangerous. Right. Which is, yeah, which is a gross, it's, it's a, it's another right. level of con, right? Right. Everyone um, wants to unleash the monster and thinks they can control it, but you can't. Right. And um, so, yeah, like uh, like that woman, who, I don't want to say her name, uh, who was like touting that she didn't believe in school shootings. And yeah. like, and then like, but behind closed doors, she was like, oh, no, I know they're real. But the devastation she's having on families right. whose ki- children right. were killed is like, what are you doing? Why would, why, what is your, right. what's your end? Like, I know what your end game is, but why is that worth it? Her end why game is a very narrow game. Yeah. The shittiest person, you know? Um, but yeah, it's interesting to think about why we sort of fall for the con, like why that w- relationship works so well. Cause it, to me, I'm always, I, I want to believe that people are gen- generally good, but I've, I don't anymore. <laughs> and um, I also want to believe that, you know, right, right will, right will win. Like kind of like the old, you know, like we, you learn as a kid, yeah. the hero will win and the villain will lose. And that's just not like in yeah. so far, what I'm seeing in the last couple of years is like, if you're rich enough, you just get away with everything and it doesn't matter. There are yeah. no consequences. 
Yeah, I think of the MLK quote, the arc of history is long, but it bends towards justice. And I'm like, you got to remember the first part. The arc of history is long. So uh, yeah, I guess my waiting- Not even just, like a person's lifetime long. Yeah. Just like long. So like maybe the justice will come and we'll never see it, but it feels like- I know. There's no justice. I know. It's very depressing. <laughs> it's very depressing. It feels like con men mostly can get away- the bigger, the, the more money you have, the easier yeah. it is to get away with your disgusting. Just being con. obviously so craven. Yeah, it's very yeah. frustrating. And that, like, sm- like uh, what were we just talking about? I was just talking with someone about the fact that, like, you know, some people at their. Uh, we were talking. This is a dumb. This is a dumb example. When I'm j- it's, it just came up recently where I was talking to somebody where they were. He, we were talking. They were talking about Carson Wentz being. Tra- traded and how Carson Wentz was basically like I don't want to be coached like I don't I don't want to be coached this is how I play and then thinking about at your job if you were just like yeah I don't I'm just gonna do what I'm gonna do I'm not gonna listen to anything you say like you'd be fired immediately (laughs) and so it's just like really you know like how how money and power kind of corrupt all of the things that you learn as a little kid and then you spend your life in my in my instance, part of your a lot part large part of your life is like reacting to not being able to believe that people get away with t- being totally shitty and that nothing happens. To them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Although to me, I, did, yeah. I did pull my power moves though. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any power move. Like I don't. I'm like a. It, it, like, yeah, I, it, like some people can get away with it. It depends on where you work. It depends on your industry. But I definitely can't get away with that. Uh, I, I can't be coached. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm no. not going to do what you're saying. And then I've definitely oh, done that, though. Oh, you, you're not going to give me what I want? Uh, send me to another school, please. <laughs> right. Like another school will right. take me. Please, please work out a deal for me to go to another job. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Where I get paid the same it. amount of un- right. unbelievable money to basically tell them I'm not going to be coached. <laughs> it's like, it's so weird. And I know it's like kind of adjacent to what we're talking about, right. but it's that same principle that like, I don't know why it is that some people can get away with that. Yeah, I know. I had to do a man's job for him when I was still working (coughs) because he just refused to do it. (laughs) Yeah. (coughs) Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people like that. And I still can't believe the depth to which he refused to do his own job. Mm -hmm. But everyone would be like, Andrea, why aren't aren't you doing that work? And I'd be like, this is not my job. And I was the bad one. But anyway, I got fired almost a year ago, and he's had to do his work for almost 365 entire days. He's had to do his own job. <laughs> he's actually, though, you know what? He's probably being more punished than you are because yeah. he has to work. <laughs> and now I actually get paid money for doing the thing I used to do for free for yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There were a lot. It sucks to be good at something because then you get the people's work who are bad at things. Like right. I would have to do people would be assigned production and it would be assigned reassigned to me because I'm do it faster. I'm like, well, mm-hmm. that's a them problem. Right. I, and this is one of the things that I refuse to do. My boss came to me multiple times. This is another boss and was like, our part timers and some of our other DJs are not very good at figuring out interesting things to talk about on the air. So can you make them a list of Mm-mm. things to talk about on the air. And I was like, no, <laughs> like if they're bad at their jobs, go find people who can do the job. Yeah. I'm not a unicorn. I'm not the only person in existence. Mm-hmm. So like <clears throat> we made a compromise. We made them a Twitter list. They never used it. <laughs> it's not my problem. <clears throat> yeah. I want to find, I do want to find that article. If I find that article, I'll let you know. Uh, I'll let you know what about it says. People. Yeah. I find them fascinating because it's so far out of like, oh, hi, Bodie. Hi. How you doing? Um, it's so far out of my own. It's out of my depth. I can't. I couldn't. I'd have to be a completely different person. We like to think we couldn't, but then you watch another show about a cult and it's like, oh, I might have. No, I mean, like I can be conned. I don't think I can be oh. a con person. 
person. Oh, like I could oh, not. Right, the right, level yeah. of lying and hurting people, I couldn't. Yeah, yeah I know. I know. I know. It's oh. just <laughs> – He's licking his butt otherwise. I was oh, going to give him a nice pet and then he's, uh, you know, Thank you for taking care of this. <laughs> My it's pets like to do that. My pets like to do that when I'm doing video therapy. Mm -hmm. My dog like jump on my lap and start licking his balls. I'm like, mm -hmm. what are you, can you please? Mm -hmm. I'm like, and this is exactly what I'm here to talk about. He just does this and he doesn't care what I'm feeling. <laughs> <laughs> but he's just a very clean cat. Like he's constantly cleaning himself. Just really? like at his body. He's always fastidious about yeah. that, which is, I appreciate it. I, I appreciate a clean man. Don't shock you like can do a better job. Ryan, since he's right here in his office. He's got his face facing the heating vent where the air comes out. It's just so funny. Oh, so I have a proposal about um we don't have to do it this week, but I was I was gonna throw it out there for everybody. Um that I was thinking about I saw um somebody shared this documentary and it's kind of old, but it looks like it would be really interesting to discuss. And it's on Prime and it's called Da, 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 do, do, do. Why they kill? Ooh. Um, which if you if you type it in, it gets a little bit. You have to type "why they kill" documentary yeah. because otherwise you'll get like "why women kill" part seven. You know, <laughs> like you get a lot of weird stuff. Um, but it's a put in "why they kill" documentary, and it's it looks like really interesting. And I thought maybe. I was just thinking about our Friday shows and and yeah. topics. And even though it's a little bit older, it seems like it would be – and people were talking about it on one of my discussion – not my, a discussion uh, page I follow. And I thought, oh. oh, it's on Amazon Prime. It's on Prime. Ooh. And it's only an hour. Yeah. We could find out why they kill. We could find out and talk about. And why then we'll they know kill. why they And kill. then we'll never have to talk about anything else again. But what? Oh, there's an, also another one called Cannibal Island. Hmm. I don't, I don't cannibals, cannibal I can't Island. do. I cannot do cannibals. Uh, ooh, Russian history. I found some very awesome spooky documentaries on Prime when I was watching when I was looking for documentaries for us to watch. Oh, cool. So I don't know. I'm going through another spooky phase with, with the turning of the spring. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. It's, I mean, it feels like ghost times. Yeah. I would, I've never been on a ghost tour. I would like to go on one. I have. I've been on two. We didn't experience anything. Yes. But it wasn't for that. Mm -hmm. Although, no, we did go inside one haunted place. Um, I did one in New Orleans, which was really, really good. Uh, I, I I think I told you I went to Eastern State Penitentiary and we did a special – you have to pay for it and you need a certain amount of people and I would totally do it again. But it's – um we did nighttime where, where you're there till like from like midnight till two. And oh. if you want to do your own ghost thing, you can or you can just walk around because some of the cells have art installations and things. Okay. And it was really cool. Uh, oh, that was cool. really cool. But it wasn't necessarily a ghost tour, but I've never been on one. Jude went on when, one when he went to South Carolina with his dad and aunt. Um, and I think he thought it was boring. Because, <laughs> oh. you know, he's, he's young. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of history yeah, and not a lot like of like, eight like, at the time. I think he was just like, meh. Uh, so I, I think I would like to do one. Maybe that can be a, something else that we do and then talk about. But it sounds like fun. I mean, who, I would like to. We know someone who, in the before time, did ghost tours. We do? Yeah, Joe Spurlock. Oh, right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I don't know if they still do. Do they still do them? I have no idea. If they're outside and walking tours, they might be able to do them. If yeah. You like keep people away and everyone has mm -hmm. masks. Um, yeah. <clears throat> That's a bummer. You know what it sucks? They had just started to do... Um, it was like true crime slash murder mystery, not murder mystery, but like history stuff in Old City. Yeah. And it started with um, the tour, whatever the tour company is, it's really good. Like, oh, crap. Um, but they had beers and <laughs> oh. so it was like drinks and murders. 
That's cool. Oh, it was, it was like drinks and diseases. So like there was an open <laughs> bar and yeah. then we went on a tour about scarlet fever. It was wonderful. That's cool. That's cool. Yes. I died. Oh, I was one of the people sorry. that died. So. Sorry. That the, I did. A, I went on a Titanic thing where I died, I think, on the Titanic. I Was that the Titanic exhibit at like was the it? Institute that came I by? saw it in Florida. So it was a little, okay, I was a yeah. little bit like um, – you know, like not sure because I think it toured, so probably it ended up there. But I did it in other states, so beyond the bell, yeah. Um, no, we had no. that girl as a guest once. Um, I shouldn't say girl, woman who does right. that. We do know them because we did beyond the bell. We had her on. Um, right. It was not. It was like, it. Oh, I don't know. It's the official like old city and they have the reenactors mm-hmm. that come up. So they have like people doing storytelling once upon a nation. That's what it is. Uh, yeah. There it's has to be some ghosties. I know that, the, I know that there is one, but they're not like completely the, uh, uh, but there's some, there have to be some out, out this way because Chester's even just Chester County or like suburbs of Philly, yeah. there's still ghosty stuff. Philly doesn't corner the market on ghosts. Okay. Right. We're at the only haunted place just because we're (laughs) colonial. Ew. (laughs) Um, I think I have another contact that did paranormal stuff. So I'll have to ask him. That would be fun. That's a, that would be a new thing. So anyway, I just wanted to throw throw out the, uh, why, why they kill. Why they kill. Yeah. Because there's, I can't, there's no new documentaries coming out. Right. In the next like week or two. No. Well, you had you gone to CrimeCon, you would have could have watched the first. Episode oh, I got of a thing that. to. I got a thing that I can still watch it. Ooh. Yeah. Well, but I didn't know if like it's on Prime. Yeah. So I don't know if like it wouldn't be fun if only I watched it and then like no one else could. <laughs> I don't know if, but I could. I could just do a review. It's, yeah, it's it's on Prime though. So when oh, it's so on it's Prime, free for everybody. Yeah. So if you watch yeah. it, and then they probably gave you a link just in case you don't yes, have Prime. They did. So that's that. Like they do with the screeners that are on Apple TV. When I get them from SAG, and I'll have the Apple TV. Yes. So. So okay, we could look at that. We can. Yeah, that was called. Fine. Forget what it was called. What? Uh, something. Any day. Secret. Something about secrets. Yes, it it's it's cool. It looks cool because it's a series. Yes, and Let me find it. Yeah, I'll find it. I'm just gonna write in Crime Con. They just sent it to me because they yeah. were like, "Did you miss?" It was so funny because it was like right after. It was almost like they heard me because they were like, "Did you miss this?" <laughs> um, tell uh, me your secrets. Tell me your secrets. Right. 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 Yeah, did you miss um, the big event last night? And I was like, well, <laughs> kind of. Yeah. And then it says, watch now on demand. Yeah, yeah. There is a crime con. Is it going to be virtual in Austin? And I think, is it? Oh, oh no, they're going to have it, I think, live. Oh, no, ten, virtual ticket. Because I'm like, I don't know if I want to do crime con virtual. I, I, I really want to do it in person when it comes back. But right. I realize that that could be what 2022 maybe if fingers crossed lips hands to god's ears i just miss restaurants <laughs> i miss movies restaurants and movies yeah someone and just on- like having things to do like like hey let's yeah. go to a museum today hey let's go anywhere <laughs> today yeah, yeah. Um. i someone on tiktok was like um what are uh, scenes from movies and TV shows that hit different now. And someone posted one from Sex in the City where Mr. Big is going, Carrie, really, you want to go out and to this party and get like pushed around by people in a crowd and eat bad catering food? And she's like, yes, yes, that is what I want. I want to be pushed <laughs> around in a crowd and I want to eat catered food. Yeah. Like I just, I want someone. I want to, yeah. I want to drive two hours into Philly, even though it is like, 15 miles from my house or whatever it is. And I want to find, uh, drive around finding a parking space. And then I want to watch a terrible improv show <laughs> and then stand outside and talk to people as they leave. And it's people I haven't seen in a minute and have, you know, random conversations. And eventually yeah. you all end up at, uh, what's still up yet. Yeah, well, not anymore. Uh, now. 
The one around the the one the other one the other one where everyone has food poisoning the other one uh, where they have the good tater tots but everyone I know has oh, food poisoning there. Really, yeah. rogues. Mm-hmm. Yes, rogues. that's it. That's it. Wow, man, rogues, come on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I miss that too. I miss. I was saying on Twitter, I miss my friends' friends. Yeah, like I miss those random conversations you have just randomly seeing people yeah and you like this is my this is my coworker, and then you talk to them and you're like oh they're cool maybe we'll be friends mm-hmm. like i miss that i miss that a lot just like yeah now i just like i'm everything's all business like put a mask on me don't make small talk i got just like yeah. get me to you know point a we've killed Take- spontaneity yeah it's not fun and yeah and i it was really fun just to stand outside the theater who would come out who would you see? Who would you end up talking to for an hour that you never ever had a conversation with before? Right. And you're all laughing. It's just right. You know. And it's not, you know, the the weird thing is that that was a moment that is never gonna happen again because it's never gonna be like that again. I mean, there'll be maybe somewhere else and there'll be other people, but that specific yeah. part of life is gone. There's that not gonna moment be in time. Yeah. yeah. And he didn't know it. Like like Andy uh, says on um, uh, The Office, and he's like, I wish there was a way to know that you were in the good old days before, you know, yeah. when you were, know that it was the good old days when you're in them. And that was like kind of it. Like you didn't know that all that complaining about, you know, standing outside no. fit is like, that's a, that's a bygone thing. That's not a thing that is going to happen anymore. Right, right. All of the things that are just gone. Mm-hmm. Going over to Bards, oh. not a thing anymore. <laughs> no, Bards. Oh, RP. I know. RP. <clears throat> it's sad. It's like, but I mean, it's necessary. Time goes on and new right. things come and it's different and exciting and fun. But it is sad when you look back and you think, man, the, the stupidest things Just that, that I way of existing in the enjoy world. Yeah. are not there anymore. Yeah. God, I miss stages. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, that that way of existing mm-hmm. is gone. Hopefully, temporarily, but yeah, who knows? It's going to be a different place, right? A different theater, a different place, a different set of people, all new people. Yeah, or maybe it'll just be all us old heads who lasted. <laughs> There's no new people ever. <laughs> just, just hanging just around, don't. and the new people being like, "What is? Uh, why are they standing around? Uh, so old, that is so old fashioned. Nobody yeah. does that." <laughs> Oh, just like me and you and nine other improvisers at uh, what was that Ruba Club? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. The days. Yeah, I just and I was talking to my therapist about this. She's like, you need to get out of your house and go to new places and have new scenery. And I'm like, I don't trust hotels to stay in. I don't. Try, I can go and sit myself down and have a, a nice meal at a restaurant, but I don't trust indoor dining. Right. And I don't know how much that's me because also I'm not a doctor, but like I don't – it's when it's going to go back to normal and then when it's going to feel like it's okay. I know. It's weird. If I met somebody – if I might meet somebody new now, they would have no concept of who I am Yeah. because I'm so different now. I stay home all the time. I don't want to go like I'm like oh I'm not going to the, I'm not going to a restaurant are you co- joking right. me um, I, I don't want to go to stores but like that's not me like today right. I had like 40 million th- like errands I had to stop at the post office I had to stop it and I was like oh my god this is what I used to be like <laughs> before yeah. this and I'm, I was like because I was like oh it's such a busy day and then I'm like no this used to be my normal day <clears throat> I know I know I think it's I think it's probably t- time to start slowly getting back to that and not because I feel like the longer I hermit in my house (laughs) the harder it's gonna be yeah to go back to reality but then like how long am I gonna work at home before like my home my work has changed so much that it can't ever go you know what I mean like at a certain point your job description becomes different too it'll be like two years yeah that's like a different job yeah it's weird. It's crazy. I feel bad for kids. I do. I think yeah. that their lives are so weird. 
Definitely so weird. Jude has like a really, I let his hair, it's grown really long. I yeah. love it. I would just let it go. He has the most beautiful hair. And not moms just love long hair yeah. on, on their son. But um, he's like, I said, oh, tomorrow's your haircut. And he's like, thank God, I'm tired of looking like a woman. Yeah. Don't be generous. He's like, I'll look like a man again. <laughs> like a man? You're nine. He did just you doesn't like him it. that women have short hair too? Yes, I did. <laughs> But he, you. you know, he knows, but he just feels like it's starting to get a little, it's flowing. It's definitely yeah. flowing. And he feels like that's not for him. Well, I'll have fine. a man bonnet. That's right. I was a like, oh, gee, can we put it up in a man bun? He's like, no. Oh, <laughs> way to be He's uncool, very into girl. like, he, he likes it long on the top, but in the back, he has a weird thing of like, he's like, mom, I, I don't like this, but I mm. love it. I would just like <laughs> let it grow out because it's gorgeous hair. I'm like, you have gorgeous hair. They always you- have the nicest hair, boys. Yeah, who don't and I'm like, grow it. and I'm like, uh, I'm like, you know, people would kill for this hair. You don't understand how beautiful this hair is. <laughs> and he's just like, whatever. I don't. No, nope, it doesn't matter. Uh, I told uh, you. I, I think I told you when we had the um, when we talked last. What, when was it? Friday. Oh, Wednesday. Last Wednesday, we we did. Um, oh, right. Lacey Johnson, and we had the um, her boyfriend kidnaps her, but he makes a soundproof room, and he actually goes to a store and says to the person behind the register or whatever helping him, like, "I want a room where people can't hear a woman screaming," and then he's like, right. "You know, for a movie." And so right. Jude heard that part. Like he was doing something and he heard me say that part. And then afterwards he was like, Ma, if I he was like, if I worked at the Home Depot and someone said to me, Can I have a soundproof room where you can't hear a woman scream? He's like, he went, uh, hold on, I'll be right back. And then he like like opened a door and like pretended to go in. And then he was like, Hello, police. Oh, this is the Home Depot. We have a real creep here. <laughs> And then, like he, then he was afterwards. He was like, "Mom, you could tell that story on your show." <laughs> like he Thank knew it was you. funny, because then, oh, then man. and because then he was riffing on it. He was like going through the whole thing. Like, I need a room where a woman can't scream. And then he was doing things where he was like, "Sir, this is a Wendy's." <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> he was like making up all funny things. Right. But it was just funny because I was like, he gets it. He's because his mom. Right. Is uh, true crime. He's like a mini true crime. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He knows it, all it, the things. What's funny is that immediately he knew instinctively, like if somebody asked for that as, as a store, that you go to the police immediately. Right. <laughs> the right. man didn't until later on. Instead but, of being like, oh, I wonder what kind of movie. Mm-hmm. And then later on being like, oh, he kidnapped his girlfriend. Who so could man. have known? Yeah. <laughs> Was a nine-year-old was like, hold on, I need to make a quick right. call. <laughs> right. Oh, man. And it wasn't like this happened 20 years – like, well, I guess it was 20 years ago, but it was in the 2000s. Like, it was a time when people should realize, like, no one's making a sound – Right. Maybe 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 he was, like, uh, in, into Quentin Tarantino movies and he just thought, okay, yeah, this guy's yeah, maybe. making some artsy movies. He's like, oh, do you have a camera phone? Amazing. <laughs> Seems legit. <laughs> I don't know. I want one. It's too expensive. <laughs> uh, so what are you going to watch to decompress after my terrible cancer murderer story? Um, I don't, you know what's weird is I don't feel – like I feel bad. I feel terrible for the patients, but I don't feel like uh, I'm okay. But I yeah. think uh, I'm just going to watch my usual uh, – I usually watch like the Goldbergs at night oh. to, like in Modern Family. I like that. Oh. It's all comforty kind of stuff. Have you caught watch. up at all on WandaVision? I haven't. <laughs> I know. I'm a bad person. Spoilers. I'm a bad person. Oh Jude hasn't God. caught up either, so he's, I think, two episodes behind. <laughs> you should. It's so good. It's getting so good. Um, I, at Harrison's suggestion, started watching Firefly Lane. Oh, okay. And it's fine. It's fine. It's just a lady melodrama. But mm-hmm. he was right. They do flash backwards and forwards a lot. Mm. Like, a lot. So sometimes yeah. you have to be like, wait, this is the storyline where... So... Yeah. It's interesting how they do it, too. It's just like a person walks out of a door and they walk out of another door and it's 20 years later. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Or you like have 20 to keep years track before. of like when and yeah. Right. It's like, okay, this hair is the 1980s. It's mm-hmm. Catherine Heigl, but this hair is the nows. Mm-hmm. And then there's another person who plays her in the teens. But then in college, it's Catherine Heigl. So you have to like. Right, right, right. Yeah. And then they go back. 
It's interesting. It's, you know, to put on. It's fine. What's that one? My, gran- my grandma likes that one where she's a witch. Like, Sabrina? No, no, no. It's like the lady from Army Wives. And then the guy who used to be on, uh, oh, I don't remember the show with um, all those ladies. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that show, of course. Uh, it was on ABC, and it was all the ladies and blah blah blah. But anyway, yeah, it, Good Witch, Good Witch. I, I don't, don't know. know. That's a real. That's a, like an extra extra lady show. Yeah, very sick opera. Love them. Yeah, I have to. I know I have to watch Wandavision. I haven't. I just. I don't know why. I just like every time I can put it on. I just don't. I don't remember what I was watching. I don't think I watched anything this weekend. I don't think I watched it. Like, I didn't binge anything this weekend. I'm out of, like, stuff that I'm excited to watch. Yeah, there's a lull. Like, I was like, I was like, I was like yeah. oh, I'd love to watch a, um, a documentary f- to talk about this week. And I'm like, what? Yeah. I need something to talk about. And I just feel like there's a lull. And I need constant content. Right. So <laughs> then we can content. create constant content. Exactly. Where's content my new bill. stuff? Otherwise, what are we going to talk about? The Goldbergs? This is now a Goldberg's so, channel. This is the Goldberg's um, channel, right? Slash Firefly Lane channel. <laughs> right. Firefly right, right. Lane Wine Mom channel. Right, right, right. Um, Slash no WandaVision spoiler zone. Desperate Housewives. That was the show. Sorry. Desperate Housewives? That was it was, the- no, but the good the guy was from Desperate Housewives and the woman was from Army Wives. Wait. And they're both on this other show called Good, I think it's called Good Witch. It's very okay. bad. It's very bad. Okay. Okay. I liked Desperate Housewives at first. I watched it. Yeah, I used to watch um, it too. No, it was good it was at first. Good at first, yeah. Uh, and then it got you – know, they always go too far. Yeah. What's a bummer is that so many shows have been on a hiatus for an extra long time. So I'm like waiting for – I'm waiting for a new season of The Great with Elle Fanning. Barry. I love Barry. It's been on uh, hiatus for so long. I don't even remember. Like I kind of remember. But I have to go – back and watch the second season so I can remember. Uh, yeah, everything's kind of like, I just want a new true crime. Is it too much to ask for for a new true crime documentary every week? Right, like when is the next Making a Murderer going to drop? Yeah. I guess it was the Cecil Hotel one. I know. I like, know. When's the next Night Stalker? The Britain one. Every, give me one right. for every murderer oh, ever, please. Right. We've watched all these Netflix. Go ahead. And then cycle through them again. Like, I don't care. Just I don't care if it's 50 on Richard Ramirez. Just bust them out. Just Return keep going. to the Cecil Hotel. <laughs> That's why I watch Dateline so much. Oh, yeah. It's unlimited. And it's always the same formula, but it's very satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. Uh, yeah. Dateline did a four. This is what we. Sh- this is what we should talk about. Okay. It's a week late though. It's a week late. Yeah. Eh. But uh, they did a four episode arc, and I missed one. I think I missed the last one. I might be wrong. It's either three or four episode arc on this guy who had six ex wives, and four of them ended up dead, and it. It goes through the whole story of like how they kind of like figured out what was going on with him. It's oh. really intriguing. Like the first episode is pretty dateline like, and then it kind of veers off into you can tell it's like Is that would, Yeah. Is that the guy that they covered on My Favorite Murder where the one fell off a cliff and the other no. she, like allegedly shot herself and then there was no cliff, but there was somebody who – there was one wife who he said committed suicide. And it's really – it's it's very – it's it's interesting because of the psychological profile. It's yeah. called The Widower. Okay. I don't know if anyone saw it, but if – yeah, if, if you want to even watch like the first app of that and like just talk, he is – He's unbelievably weird. You could do it as your story on Tuesday. I could, but then I feel like everyone watched it already, so I wouldn't be revealing anything. Mm-hmm. It's more like a interesting to talk about like what this guy's like because he's so narcissistic yeah. and 
Anyway, if you don't want to, it, it, you guys should watch it. It's very good. Okay. It's like it it starts off, like I said, classic Dateline, and then it veers off into something different, like more of a documentary series following this guy. And this guy is so creepy. I can't believe he got six women to marry him. He's I know. It's always like that guy. And when he talks about his wives, oh, God, it's he is so gross. And he thinks he's so – sexy and like uh, like great and he's so gross he's uh, disgusting uh, um I'm and definitely yeah just watching like this. <laughs> it's like it's like the it's so he's such a typical narcissist narcissistic psychopath it's so typical but even then you're just like what the hell am i looking at like you, I, honestly through most of it i'm like what am i seeing what is who is this why is he like this right yeah. Who gave you the right, sir? Like, why do you – why is it that someone like you has confidence? I don't – Right. Right. All the confidence in the world. Right. This guy. Like, you are sucky. Yeah. There's, he's so shitty. He's so shitty. I mean, if he's allowed to walk around with confidence, maybe we just should. Right. You just I mean, it doesn't like, have to be based on anything, apparently. No. We could just – we could just do it. You could – but it takes a lot of like retraining your brain. I don't know. It would take a lot of retraining my brain. Like this guy is just, I think his narcissism makes him so confident because yeah. he legitimately just thinks it's everybody else and not him. And, you know, I, I just, he doesn't want to be coached. <laughs> I won't be coached. Oh, he's, well, he won't. I can't tell you how many lawyers he goes through. Of course. Of oh, course. God. Yeah. It's the classic. Like I am so shocked he didn't want to defend himself. Yep. That's because the classic move. He yeah, goes through so many lawyers. Like it's you, it, you'll if you watch it, it's almost it's almost comical. Um, <laughs> the way that he and then he just tells them what to do. And the one lawyer's like, he has a lot of opinions. Not all of them are legal. <laughs> Of course, of course. I love a shady lawyer. Yeah, and the <laughs> widower. It's really it's a Dateline like exclusive. That's really really good. Okay. I enjoyed it a lot. I was like, I was all in on it. Cool. I will look that up. But I'm, you know, I'm a big Dateline. Person. I know. I know. That's why I got you that ornament. <laughs> it wasn't my, it wasn't my true love, Keith Morrison, but it was still very, very good. I, well, now that I know that, <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you a big Keith like pillow or something. Oh, Keith. I know. It's weird. I just, he, he's the, he's the best. He's the best. Okay. Nobody can nobody can do that voice and nobody can do that face. Like he's always got a face on like, what? <laughs> no matter what. He's like disgusted. Oh, he does disgusted so well. Uh, yeah. Like, good. I'm glad you're mad about that. I feel mm -hmm. better now. Okay, cool. I would cool. love to be – I always say like I would love to be an – I would have no um, professional presence though or like a lot of times they're just like – I'd be like, what? I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. There are so many interviews that I'm like, if I was sitting there, I would laugh in their face. Yeah. I I would just be re – I would react so intensely to everything. I'd be like, oh, my God. How did you do it? And then – but they're they're just so like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or they'll be like, ooh. And I would be blowing up. I would I know. be like screaming be in like, their faces. I know. I'd be like, bitch, no, you didn't. I know you didn't. We all know. We all know you killed her. Just what yeah. are we doing? What are we doing? I'd be like, come on. Stop playing. We are busy. You are busy. <laughs> this airs in four hours. So anyway, yeah. So that if you, anyone has a chance, that's a super duper good one. All right, cool. So we'll figure out Friday. Yeah, we will. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for everyone who came. Yeah, um, thank you. Follow and subscribe. We love you. We love to see you all in the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, check us out on Crime and Cookies at, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram um, to be the first one to know what's going on in the new stream. And we will see you on Friday. Have an awesome rest yep. of your week. Bye, right. everybody. Bye.